Welcome back to Web Cafe AI. We do daily ChatGPT and AI videos for your personal and business life. In today's video, we're going to be looking at the app of Google Task and seeing how we can leverage Zapier and AI with this app. Welcome to the series here at Web Cafe AI, where we're tackling all 5,000 apps found on Zapier's backend and showing you how to leverage AI with every single one. So if you're new to the series, make sure to subscribe and get involved here as you're going to learn a ton of stuff when it comes to AI automation. And if you're returning to the series, then strap up because you already know we're going to learn a ton of stuff here. So let's go ahead and dive into today's tutorial where we're specifically looking at Google Task and how we're going to leverage ChatGPT in this specific context. All right, so let's go ahead and rename our zap here to Google Task. If I can click that, there we go. And essentially what I want to achieve in today's video is we're going to have a lead come in through a Google form. And then once that lead comes in through a Google form, we're going to automatically set up a chat GBT block to, to interpret that lead and then essentially set up a Google task that may outline X, Y, Z of what's expected for you to do once you receive that lead for the underlying context. Now, if that didn't make a lot of sense, just stay tuned here as you're going to learn how to prompt structure this and execute with AI when it comes to Google task. For now, though, we're going to go ahead and set up our first trigger here, which is going to be a Google form as we're going to use our courses account here found at Web Cafe AI and a previously inputted form response we already have when it comes to a lawn mowing service. So we set up a pseudo uh, lead form here. So whatever your lead form is, whether it's type form or whatever context it may be in your sense, so maybe it's a calendarly uh, meeting that was just scheduled. From here, we're just going to go ahead and choose courses here, and then we're going to go ahead and choose our form of lawn services, continue here, and then test this trigger in order to find the data that we can start playing around with. So let's go ahead and use the response found right here, which is going to be form C. We're going to go ahead and say continue with selected record. I'm going to jump down here, and we're going to go ahead and do our first chat GBT block here, where essentially we're going to outline a couple of stuff that we want chat GBT to do for this underlying form response. So we're going to choose conversation. And continue here continue here and then we are going to go ahead and up some of our models here so for model we're going to go ahead and up to gbt4 you can still use 3.5 it does require a lot more prompt structuring here but for us we're going to go ahead and do gbt4 and then we're going to go ahead and create our message here so we're going to go ahead and say based off this lead we got for our lawn services so we're going to give context and do semicolon and then let's go ahead and insert some information here. So we got the data below here. We're going to go ahead and first find the most prevalent information. So we're going to do name, semicolon, parentheses. We're going to go ahead and do services requested, semicolon, parentheses. And then we are going to go ahead and put in address. So essentially what you're probably noticing me doing here is I'm formatting the data that we received in order for GBT to internalize it correctly. And there is an overlap. So it understands exactly what I'm looking for here. And then we're gonna do property size because essentially property size, semicolon parentheses. Essentially, I can't do this. I can't just put Tim Adams. I mean, honestly, contextual wise, they'll probably don't understand this. So let me do a better example here. This is do this number of square feet for the underlying lead uh, questionnaire here. So. If I were to just input, input this and just put uh, property size and square feet and then the number, all that would be pushed forward on ChatGPT's backend would just be the number. It wouldn't actually know the context of what that number means. Therefore, when you deal with that kind of issue, we have to make the uh, brackets and identify what that number means. So in this context, we are dealing with property size. And if I can spell today, perfect. And we're going to go ahead and put in our email here. We can put in our address here. We can do services requested, and then we can finally put in the name. So we did all that to give GBT context of who the potential lead is. And essentially what we're going to do here is we're going to say, generate a task list in bullet point structure. So it understands how to structure it. And we're not just getting paragraph on paragraph on paragraph. And we're going to go ahead and then identify what we want in this task list. So this is going to be whatever contextually you typically do after a lead in your business. So for this example, we're just going to say, uh, set it up as one through three. And let's have the task list B. And then we're going to go ahead and say, uh, reply to email. And actually we're just give a little bit more structure here. We're going to say reply to email. Uh, we do services 
requested with name with relevant information and then we're gonna do one cool little block here and we're just gonna go ahead and say um, generate a template that is specific to this lead that can be used in an email uh, body so we may need to restructure this go a little bit different on how we approach this but for now essentially my goal here is based off the lead data that we received we want to generate a task that says reply to email a service requested with within relevant information and the generates a template that we could use in that reply email so from here we're going to go ahead and just do a memory key of form task and memory keys ensure that it's consistent outputs I'm going to go ahead and test this action and I may need to reformat this a little bit different. It might not have enough context of what I'm trying to achieve here, but let's go ahead and see what it comes up with. All right. So perfect. So we got step one and retrieve the email. It's saying essentially just you got to do step one, which is draft an acknowledgement of the form response. Then it gave us a nice description of the services requested with all the relevant information. Although for the third task, it did seem to mess up here and assume that hey like here would be good structuring to be put into a body let's go ahead and restructure this a little bit so that actually just gives us the body so we're gonna say generate a template that is specific to the lead that can be used in an email body please give me an example email body so maybe i just need to take it one step further here and ask it to give the example of the email body therefore it understands that no we don't want tips on how to make the email body rather we actually want you to generate the underlying body all right, perfect. So it does one and two correct like we already know. Then we jump over to step three and it gave us this example email body that could be specifically used in our context here. Now I want to point out this email body might be a little too long. So we could add a parameter block to identify specific uh, restrictions we want off the context. But for now, that should be sufficient of what we're trying to achieve today. So we're going to go ahead and add another block here. And this is going to be a Google task block. So we're going to type in Google task. And then we're going to go do it, do a, an event of create a task. I'm going to go ahead and hit continue here. And then I'm going to have to sign into our courses account. All right. So once you sign to your account, it'll show up there. We'll go ahead and hit continue and we can go ahead and put in a couple of variables here. So we're going to go ahead and put my task as where we're going to associate the task. You may create a different task list in your back end. From there, though, let's go ahead and name this as lead uh, responsibility or lead bullet points as the task title we could in theory create a more unique um title so if we want to add a little bit more variable data to this title we could add the individual's names so we do uh tim adams sorry we're gonna do tim adams and then we do a space here and we got lead bullet points the notes it's gonna be the underlying conversation we created there so the assistant response message and then from here we could add a due date if needed um this could be anything this could be from seven days from now 14 days from now 24 hours from now so on and so forth for now we're not gonna add a due date we're gonna go ahead and test this action and see how this would look on google's side so we're in the courses gmail here we're gonna jump over to our task and boom there it is we got our bullet point here it provides us with step one step two and step three with the body that we were looking to generate if you feel like you learned something, make sure to like the video. It's completely free and it helps us here at Web Cafe AI. If you want to learn more about AI and automation and how to leverage that for your personal or business life, check out the playlist at the end of this video as we're diving into all 5,000 apps found on Zapier's backend and showing you how you can integrate AI with every single one. Without further ado, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for tuning in. And yes, surprise, I'm an AI avatar. Make sure to explore more here at Web Cafe, where we demystify AI for your personal and business life. Until next time.